Good morning, church. Welcome to Calvary United Methodist Church. If you're a guest or visitor today, it is our intent to provide an opportunity to worship with one another and with our Lord to nurture our journeys in life. And also as part of our gathering, we often pause and share a prayer before we begin this worship service. And today in our world with so much going on with the powers of this world, I just ask us to keep in mind that we are here for the powers of the kingdom. And even though we might differ on different positions and political items and the different things that may go on in this world, let us not differ on the fact that we are all children of God and everyone is welcomed here to participate and to be part. No matter what label the world may put on us, make, make sure that our label is clear. We are part of this family of faith. It is good that you're here today and I hope and pray that the Lord will be with us. Let us pause for a moment. Gracious God, in the midst of a world that too often seems so chaotic, in the midst of a time that too often seems to be defined by unrest and dissension and disagreement and too often hate, may these be moments filled with understanding and with love. May these be moments where your spirit guides our individual lives and therefore our participation in our communities and in our world. So Lord, it's so easy to say we pray to be with us. But this day we also ask in a more perhaps difficult time that each and every one of us would seek ways to be with you. In thy name, Lord, we gather, we seek to worship, and we now pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Our praise team is so faithful here almost every week of the year to guide us in uplifting psalms to begin our time together. Welcome, gang. Thank you. Uh, good morning to all of you, and thank you for coming. Uh, just a couple of things. If you're visiting, uh, we're delighted to have you. There is fellowship after church. And you have these small cards uh, in your pews. Uh, we'd love to have your contact information or um, if you have a prayer request or a prayer of thanks, please put it on here and put it in. And for our, our mission moment today, it occurred to me that uh, uh, a silent uh, prayer during the week for Calvary uh, is, would be welcomed and for all of the outreach and the service that we do. So it's something you can do. You don't have to get in your car. You don't have to go anywhere. You can just do it silently uh, in your own home. So please pray for Calvary. And now our first song is Save Your King. If you are able, please stand. This, this is what you referred to as, whoops, take two. And now let's our say is here with us today. a special prayer for Brian.
now, Brian, the other music. Well, what is that song? <laughs> oh, wait, coming back. Come on. All who are thirsty. to celebration in the bulletin or on the screen. O oh Lord, call us again to life of justice, kindness, and humility. So that, that this hour before us, us would be filled with your love and spirit. And our hearts would be open and our arms extended, embracing all of those around us. And, and may, may our time together nurture our, our own journeys to be, be more faithful, faithful and, and fulfilling. And the first hymn, O Splendor of God's Glory Bright, number 679.
Please let us take a moment here in Calvary in worship to greet and to welcome everyone who is present into this family of faith. Let us warmly greet one another. I know if there's other children with us today, if they'd make their way forward. Any other children with us, if they would make their way forward at this time? Well, good morning, gang. How are you doing? Everybody doing okay? Yeah? All right. Oh, I hear somebody who's not happy. Hey, let me ask you a quick question. See if you recognize what I have in my hand. What are these? Huh? What, what do you think they are? You got, a, you got a guess? What are they? Notebook. Notebooks? That's one answer. What else? Notepads. What do you, what do you think? What are they? Oh no. Nope. What, what, what? Oh wait, wait. Okay. What, what, wait, wait, what? What are they? Checklist. Checklist. Yes. In fact, these are notepads that I write down all the things I have to do that day. Do you have one of those? Do you have a list of what you got to do today? You do. What's what's one thing? on your list that you have to do today? I gotta write Amelia's name, my name, but not anybody's name. Okay, so you have to write some names down, huh? Just two. Just two. All right, what, what's on your list today? I have to remember not to crush any of my sister's friends when I go to her birthday party when I fell, fall down roller skating. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That's a long list. Yeah, well, if I was going roller skating, that would be on my list also. <laughs> what, 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 let's see what your teacher says. What's one thing, Liz? Let's see what's on Miss Liz's list today. What's one thing, Liz? Laundry. And I thought this was going to be an uplifting comment. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We all have lists, don't we, of the things we have to do. But wait a minute. You know what I don't put on my list sometimes that I should perhaps put at the top? is not what I have to do, but how am I going to do it? With what kind of attitude am I going to do it? Have you thought about that? Like, for instance, am I going to do the laundry today with an attitude, oh, I have to do the laundry? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Too often we do that, don't we? Or if I go to an ice skating party 
Am I going to go with the attitude that I have to go and I really don't want to be there? No. Or am I going to go with an attitude that says what? Yeah. This is going to be fun. And I have a chance to have fun with some other people. You know, what I thought would be a good reminder today is not just the list of things that we have to do, but remember how we should do them. It's so important, especially at your age, to start off with not just list of things we have to do, but list of things that we can do with a good attitude and with a good way of doing them. Gang, let us pray. Gracious God, for the children before us each and every Sunday, for the children in our communities in our world each and every day, and for the opportunities to nurture and grow with them, we ask your blessing. Be with us. And everybody said, Amen. 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 You can head off to Sunday school. See me after church. Okay? Thanks, guys. Jan, would you please? Yes. Let's uh, get uh, in the right frame of mind for our prayer this morning and sing together our prayer hymn, Ferris Lord Jesus, on page 189. Every week, our visitation pastor, Ellie Law, puts together a list of names and circumstances for prayer for our congregation, not just today during worship, but each and every day of the coming week. I want to lift these in particular today. Liz and Juan Martinez, Liz's grandfather, whom they were quite close with, passed last weekend. The service was held uh, this week and many in our congregation know the high level of activity that Liz and Juan provide for our congregation and our family every week. We want to keep Liz and Juan in our thoughts and prayers. I brought greetings to the family 
at the funeral home on behalf of our family of faith here. And it was well, well received. And they are so thankful that Liz and Juan have found a, a home, a family here at our church. Christine Thomas is still recovering from one surgery. It appears after another. She will have another surgery this coming Wednesday, we believe, at this point. Please continue to keep Christine in our thoughts and prayers. And a prayer celebration. Charles Moore had surgery last week. And I see back in his regular seat and pew, even though it's a distance from where I am, Charles is with us this morning. Charles, it's good to have you back among this family of faith, Charles. Hear, here. And so let us keep this in a place where you'll remember each and every day of the coming week to lift and remember these individuals in your prayers. Jan, would you lead us yes. today in prayer? Please join me in the almighty prayer, which is listed in your bulletin. Almighty God, who challenges our congregation with a ministry which lightens and enhances the lives of others, lead us into committed worship and therefore service, enabling our ministry to bring wholeness to our world. For we believe the church has the best message for all to hear, but so often we become silent like salt which has lost its taste or a light that has grown dim forgive us when our lack of genuine concern and enthusiasm falls short in ministry to our community and world and then please refresh us by your spirit that we may accept your challenges and hear your callings from this day forth amen Today, instead of my prayer, I'm going to ask that we might share together a prayer of our denomination. It, if you would, in the back of your hymnals. Too often we treat the back of the hymnals as the uh, land of unknown. I want you to turn to number 886. Our denomination, as I mentioned at the beginning of the service, is made up of people from all walks of life and all political perspectives. This is the social creed, if you will, in the form of an affirmation and prayer that our denomination from all walks of life has proclaimed for dozens and dozens of decades. And in the midst of our world with so much in conflict at times, I thought no better way than to celebrate the Methodist movement, not by just my prayer, but by the prayer of the people of faith who have led this denomination for many years. So if you would, let us affirm and let us pray. And if you would read the portions in the darker print, I will share the others. We believe in God, creator of the world and of all people, and in Jesus Christ incarnate among us, who died and rose again, and in the Holy Spirit present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the upholding of human dignity and community, in every expression of love and justice and reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gifts entrusted to us that all may have enough in all responsible use of the earth's resources. We confess our sin individually and collective by silence or action through the violation of human dignity based on race or class or age or sex or nation or faith through the exportation of people because of greed and indifference through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national or international life and through the search of security by those military and economic forces that can threaten human existence, and through the abuse of technology, which endangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We commit ourselves individually as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom 
may come. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And amen. Today I want to celebrate a number of actions that is in response to that social creed that our congregation participates in. You'll note in your bulletin on the back sheet how many different gatherings are coming in the next two weeks. And I wish to highlight these. Today, our congregation begins to try to take one Sunday every month to help with daily bread. Daily bread is our outreach and feeding ministry for our homeless neighbors. If you would like to participate any of the Sundays that our congregation is sponsoring, I'm going to ask Keith, where you at, brother? You're here? If Keith, if you would stand up a moment. Keith Smith is the chairperson of our Social Concerns Committee, and they have taken this task on. Please see Keith in order to sign up or to participate in that Sunday, once a month. Also, once a month, our United Methodist women have come forth to take a Thursday, as I recall, and that's coming up as well. You'll see it there on February the 9th. Is Joan here? Where's Joan Bradley? Where you at, Joan? You here to this day? Nope. Oh, that's right. They're, they're I think, someplace else today, just helping out. Sorry. See Joan Bradley or any of the United Methodist women that can help. And I want to highlight that their meeting is this coming Saturday, and Howard and Shirley have opened up their homes uh, for a very special meeting. And if I understand correctly, there's a strange person there that's going to be your guest speaker by the name of Sarah Homitsky. Is that correct? I don't know how you got her. Good luck. <laughs> Sarah happens to be Ellen and our third child, and uh, will bring gifts and grace to that meeting about some of the needs of our society, and especially in particular women's needs. So please, that meeting is open to all the women of our congregation. Take note, also, there are meetings, a number of them, in the next two weeks, and they will be listed there. Our mission night on Monday, our choir on Tuesday, and the Wednesday evening Bible study with Steve Toole, who is a professor of Old Testament uh, from the Pittsburgh Theological Seminary, has been with us. His final Wednesday is this Wednesday, and you need not have been to the others. Every one in and of itself is quite an experience with Steve. So please take note of those special opportunities for ministry and outreach here at Calvary. With those thoughts, let us now continue to celebrate our tithes, our gifts, and our many offerings. Let us share. Would you please stand with me?
Each Sunday, Lord, we have the opportunity to light candles at your altar that remind us of your presence here in worship. But then each and every day, we have an opportunity to be that light in our communities, in our families, in our world that shares your presence as well. This day, Lord, as we place gifts upon your altar, we also celebrate the gifts that come and sit and stand in these pews. May they all receive of your blessing to continue to share your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we ask of this and we seek to serve. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Please, my friends, you may be seated.
Thank you, choir. Speaking from the tenor part, is there any oxygen in the house? <laughs> hey, today we continue the lectionary challenge in the Gospel of Matthew, and we begin a portion of the lectionary that takes us through the fifth chapter. And so the very first verses of that fifth chapter might be familiar to us, and they are so well known that too often we don't hear them. So let us listen this morning closely to the scripture from the fifth chapter of Matthew. Jan, would you close? The Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you, against you falsely. For on my account, rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of our Lord written by the people of God for the people of God. Praise Thanks God. be to God. Thank you, Jan. What does it mean to you to be blessed? What does it mean to you to be blessed? We hear a lot of acceptance speeches, especially this time of the year, usually by someone holding some sort of trophy or little statue in athletics or in the arts, music, performance. And often they will use this phrase, I'm so blessed to be here today. What does it mean to you to be blessed? And for those of us who are unelected and not famous, we might be sitting back going, yep, you're blessed all right. What does it mean? I want to give credit to King Duncan. He is a pastor who shares a lot of sermon material. And he sent me on this little journey today. And I want to give thanks to him for helping my creative juices to move in this direction. For you see, I think it would be easy for us to define what it means to be blessed in a moment of victory or perceived success. But it also can be very confusing, can it? A few Sundays ago, one of my peers was beginning to give the benediction. And it was one of those Sundays when we were in the midst of the playoffs here in Pittsburgh. And you can tell that there was one particular family that was quite geared up for the game that Sunday afternoon, and their three-year-old had been coached. But at the end of the service, when the pastor raised his hands to give the blessing, the three-year-old, before the pastor could open up his mouth any further, hollered out, touchdown! The pastor was speechless for at least 30 seconds, and the blessing was something more than they expected. What does it mean for you to be blessed? Last year, another one of my peers <laughs> in a wedding service was sharing how throughout the time of premarital counseling, he had been a little concerned because the groom had not been raised in the church nor understood any of the tradition. But he was such a wonderful person, enthusiastic and looking forward to this wedding day. But whenever it came time for the final blessing and the pastor put up his hand, to give that blessing, the groom jumped up and gave him two high fives. 
He didn't know what to do for a moment, but he thought, oh, the bride shouldn't be left out, so he moved his hands over, <laughs> and the bride came and threw him out. What does it mean to you to be blessed? In the 14th century, in the midst of the Black Plague, Pope Gregory VII sought to, to decree at least one example or definition. When a person sneezed, he literally decreed to the entire kingdom that after a person sneezed, you were to say, God bless you. You ever thought about where that came from? For some of the world, the word blessed here in Matthew literally can be translated is to happy, happiness. In fact, there are preachers in our country that have moved the Beatitudes toward the be happy tubes. But I want to challenge that a little bit today because I believe that happiness is different than being blessed. Happiness is more of a psychological state of satisfaction. We might feel good about our life in those moments. It comes and it goes. And too often, happiness in our society can be based on external factors. But I believe blessedness is much deeper. Instead of being based on external factors, blessedness is based on internal ones. Blessedness is more than the ebb and flow of life's experiences and our relationship with society. Instead, blessedness is a foundation and a fulfillment that's based in our relationship with God. I do not feel that you can translate blessedness into happiness. As an example from the Old Testament, Lamentations is a book in the Old Testament that very seldom is preached from, mostly because it's a collection of funeral eulogies, basically, from a time in 586 B.C. when the Babylonians came in and conquered and destroyed Jerusalem and the Great Temple. And literally, much of the collection that you find in Lamentations is the eulogies and the prayers that were given at the thousands of funerals that took place in 586 B.C. as family members were being placed and forced into exile, which, by the way, for two generations, or 66 years in our time management, until King Cyrus and the Persians helped them return, and Haggai, the prophet, asked the question, Lamentations, the third chapter, there was nothing to be happy about. But listen to the words. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Therefore, great is my faithfulness. Our author had nothing to be happy about. But oh, was he blessed. Blesses and blessings and blessedness is something that does not come to us because we want to enjoy or affirm a particular moment in life, whether it might be easy living or a life that has been lived in luxury. Instead, blessedness is to be able to possess an inner conviction of God's presence, even if it's stormy or treacherous in our world. What does it mean to you to be blessed? Happiness might be based upon what we have, but blessedness is based upon who we are. It's not upon what kind of house we live in, no. Blessedness is about the kind of people who live in that house. This is God's house, Calvary. What kind of people live here? Are we blessed? Or are we just happy? By the way, many scholars 
look at the Gospel of Matthew as a continuation of Exodus. In fact, they, I believe accurately, give tremendous parallels between Moses and Jesus. Think just for a moment. Matthew was written for the Judeo-Christian community, by the way. It was to convince those from the Jewish tradition that Christ was the Messiah and it was a new day. In fact, in Matthew, you hear the word, I did not come to destroy the law, I came to fulfill the law. In Matthew, in this particular text, where was Jesus and the disciples and those who were following? In this text, it makes it clear, there on the mountaintop. And where was Moses when he received the Ten Commandments? On the mountaintop. In fact, they will draw parallels between our scripture today and the Ten Commandments. In fact, they will say that Moses received the Ten Commandments, which was a list of things thou shall not do. Where today, in our scripture, Jesus on the mountaintop receives the list of things that we should remember to do. A list of things that challenge us in discipleship. Take note, poor in spirit, which by the way is not translated well into the English language. Poor in spirit often is perceived by us to be with the lack of enthusiasm or the lack of spirituality, and that's a mistake. Poor in spirit was a way to capture the essence of being humble, of believing that you're not first, of believing that you're part of a greater whole. A better translation would be those who are humble in their spirits. Oh, and two, by the way, mourning, those who mourn, we miss that totally in our society because when in context, the Witzenleben, the actual understanding of the text and the word that was used is really about the relationship that one has with God even in the midst of great loss. It's translated in one word in English to mourning, but it misses and does not capture the process that was in place at that time for mourning where you tore a piece of cloth that you wore, where you placed something on the doorway of your home to proclaim to all that you've experienced great loss, but you have continued your relationship with God. Blessed are those who mourn. There's really blessings upon those who understand their relationship with God. Meek, as well as an act of peacemaking. Pure in heart, merciful, those who seek righteousness. In the Old Testament, Moses gives us a list of the things we should not do. In the New Testament, Matthew captures for us on the mountaintop the list of things we should do. Many of the theologians over the years have sought to capture the essence of the Beatitudes. And I came across one of my favorites, Frederick Beechner. He quotes from a series about the Civil War. I looked it up, in fact, Ken Burns is the one who created the film series on the Civil War. And in most part, you could say it's a reaction and a review of all of the conflicts that the Civil War brought to this country. But in one of the clips, he shares an anniversary, a 50th anniversary, of the Battle of Gettysburg, where veterans from the North and the South gather at the battleground. There is a lot of reminiscing going on because most are in their 70s and 80s. And they decide in this clip that they're going to reenact part of Pickett's charge. The reality was far from the original where there were swords and rifles and smoke and gunfire and death. But instead, many of them were on canes and crutches. But as both sides converged, the old men did not fight. Instead, they embraced and they wept. Half a century later, they saw that the great battle 
had really been filled with a lot of madness of the day. The men who were advancing towards them across the field of Gettysburg were not enemies, but they were human beings like themselves, with the same dreams, needs, hopes, the same wives and children waiting and praying for them to come home safely when many did not. What they saw and what they remembered at that day were two different things. Because they remembered a time in life, oh yes, passion enough to kill, to hate, in the midst of destruction. But what they also saw that day was the truth that can come about years later. For a few moments, they were blind. Where do you belong these days? when you look out the window and see a world that too often is only seen as division and conflict. There are debts to pay. There are dangers that can scare us. It looks like our children are at risk at times, and at times they are. But then, as followers of Jesus, what is it that we can bring to this world? Well, the list is there today. So this week, when you ask the question, what does it mean to be blessed? Maybe the words like merciful, seeking righteousness, meek, peacemaking, being humble, and to practice mourning, even in the midst of loss, that the strong relationship with God just might come to your mind. Amen? Amen. Let us stand and let us sing the final hymn of our time together in worship today.
And the congregation proclaimed, Amen. Amen. There is a fellowship afterwards, as our praise team mentioned today. And also after worship, our staff parish relations committee needs to meet. I'm going to suggest that everyone go to fellowship first, and our staff parish relations committee will meet in the parlor at 1230. So please, let us enter this week, nurtured by our time together. And a guest who visited today, we hope that you have felt welcome and will return to us soon. Let us receive the benediction. Gracious God, we give thanks for the music in our hearts and on our voices, for the prayers and for the time together this day in worship that strengthens us for the moments ahead in witnessing. Guide us this coming week, we pray, and be with us, Lord, until we meet again. But help each and every one of us to be with you. Go in peace. Amen. Let us be blessed with the music that Brian has prepared. <laughs> 